just filter in and out of my room. The questions all sound the same. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Good Drum Show with me, Chris Goodrum. As per usual, a big thank you to everybody that watched last week's episode of the show. Liked, commented, um, yep, yeah, very, very much appreciated. I, I think there's some comments that I haven't caught up with as yet, so I'll obviously endeavour to do so as soon as uh, as soon as I can. So, um, yeah, thought last week's episode of the show went went quite quite well. Uh, lovely email from Freddie from uh, Hermitage Cognac saying thank you for the uh, the reviews, and they were going to share it with the the rest of the team. Um, so, yeah, that was that's pretty cool. Anyway. On to this week's episode of the show. As you can see from the title page, it's back to whiskey and a brand new independent bottling company. And as you can see, the labels are pretty impressive. And that was the thing that really sort of struck me about this company, Glass Shoe Spirit. Um, so I got an email a couple of months ago, something like that, from uh, a chap called um, Julian Milhoff saying, uh, we're Glass Shoe Spirits, we're a new independent bottling company. Would you like to buy our whiskey? And I sort of looked at the labels and thought, those labels are really cool. I just loved that sort of, you know, 1920s art deco-y kind of style. And I thought, as I often do, let's hope the juice is pretty good. Because at the end of the day, as I said countless times before, packaging, labelling, frippery, it really is all secondary at the end of the day. Because what really matters is the juice in the bottle, as I keep saying. And I really hope the juice in those bottles was going to live up to the quality of the labels. So I said to Julian, I said, please send me some samples. And um, et voila, I have said samples here in front of me. Um, so a, a little bit about um, Glashew Spirits. Um, so the tale, I suppose, of Glashew Spirits actually sort of predates um, the actual founding of, uh, of the company uh, by quite a number of years. It basically goes back to uh, a meeting between uh, two guys, Julian Milhoff and Paul Jameson, who met while studying aircraft engineering at, uh, at college. So obviously these two guys are pretty uh, pretty uh, knowledgeable and pretty intelligent, I would have thought. You know, you need to, to be fairly intelligent to sort of do aircraft engineering, I imagine. Um, anyway, so they, they basically ended up studying at the same university and ended up getting a job at the same company in Presswick. Um, and probably would have carried on uh, just being aircraft engineers and but lockdown kind of got in the way and uh, um, changed an awful lot of people's lives uh, you know and uh, obviously you know in, in sort of good and bad ways but anyway so basically these these two guys Julian and um, and Paul found themselves out of work and wondering what to do next and apparently Paul had uh, spent some years working in a whiskey shop and I, and both of them apparently were into their whiskies and they thought well why don't we set up an online whiskey shop and just stock um, independent uh, bottlings which is what they duly did so in 2020 they released or set up um, the, the uh, Damn Good Drams website um, and so, obviously, I would imagine from uh, <laughs> the fact that they're still still in operation that they made a sort of like a success of that and thought, well, why don't we bottle our own whiskey? Um, and as I said on countless occasions, it's not difficult to be uh, to, to become an independent bottling company. It's certainly not rocket science or aircraft engineering. <laughs> At the end of the day, all you need is contacts and money. That's it. Yeah, contacts and money, it's all you need to set up an independent bottling company in reality. I mean, yes, obviously there's, there, there are other bits and pieces involved, but essentially it boils down to being able to sort of buy the stuff and bottle it, really. Um, anyway, um, as I said, you know, the, the, the thing that really attracted me to, to, to these particular bottlings was um, the, the labels. Now, according to, um, to the guys, uh, they, they wanted, because Glashew is based in Glasgow and apparently Glashow is the Gaelic name for Glasgow. Apologies if I've mispronounced the name but you know me in pronunciations. Um, so they wanted to basically create labels for their, their whiskies that had some resonance A with um, people that had helped them along the way and also um, to a nod to Glasgow itself and uh, um, Rennie McIntosh apparently anyway. So um, for example, some of the labels, like for the uh, the Ardlair, um, is a, uh, a a view of 
um, Victorian Glasgow, or basically how they thought Victorian Glasgow would, would have looked. And uh, there's apparently a cobbled street, and there's a, uh, a sort of a light on in one of the windows of the houses, which I'm assuming has obviously got, or apparently according to them, has got some kind of relevance to uh, a friend of theirs that helped them out. Um, the Glen Glasgow 13-year-old um, has a, a really interesting picture of uh, the Benny Rail Plane. I mean, I'd never heard of this. <laughs> Completely new to me. It was apparently constructed in the 1930s uh, in a place just north of Glasgow by a chap called George Benny. Um, unfortunately, he ran out of money and the, and the project got completely canned. But it looks pretty cool, doesn't it? It looks like something out of Flash Gordon or something. And... Um, and one of the other labels, the um, uh, the the Isla bottling, is um, just a general view of industrial era Glasgow uh, from uh, taken from a drone. Apparently, they uh, uh, took a, uh, sent up a drone to take a picture of the uh, Dowan Hill Church, and then obviously must have got the uh, graphic designer that sort of uh, actually put the labels together to reimagine that shot as if it was uh, 1920s or 1930s Glasgow so you know really really cool labels and like I said you know I really hope that the spirit uh, or the juice in the bottle kind of lives up to that um, so guess there's not a great deal else to say apart from um, let's have a look at the line. you know that right you do know that Right, okay, so um, as I've often said, the, the with regards to sort of independent bottlings these days, there is a, a relatively limited gene pool of casks that um, these independent bottling companies uh, can uh, purchase. And so one assumes they have to kind of like sort of get a little bit creative, buy sort of like from private individuals. And I mean, certainly there's a couple of uh, Glen Glassows here and I haven't seen an independent bottling of Glen Glassow for a number of years, it has to be said. Um, so we're going to kick off with another, another whiskey that I've only actually seen bottled once before. So this is an Ardlair. Now, for those of you that don't know, Ardlair is the unpeated spirit that's uh, produced at Ardmore and um, uh, f for years I obviously knew that, that uh, uh, this spirit kind of uh, existed but it, <laughs> it was mytho mythological you know it was like yes it exists but has anyone ever seen it? Um, one assumes again that like a lot of these distilleries this was all just used purely for blending but um, I actually came across a bottling early uh, or late last year early this year um, from Signatory and now suddenly here, here's another one so this is a nine year old Ardlair um, it was uh, aged in a Saint Emilion uh, X red wine cask or finished in an X red wine cask I should say uh, distilled in February 2014 bottled in August of last year at 50 percent as you will see all of the uh, the bottlings have been done at 50%. Don't have a cast number. I think they're all single cast bottlings. One of the things I did indeed forget to to uh, to, to ask the question. Uh, bottling number two is an Altmore. Uh, so this is a Madeira Octave cask finish. Uh, 13 months, I believe, it's spent in the Madeira Octave. Uh, so distilled in July of 20. 13 bottled in April of 2023 nine years old and again bottled at 50% and then on to the first of the two uh, Glen Glasso bottlings apparently this is called Craig Mills this is sort of the unpeated spirit produced at Glen Glasso and I didn't know that as something new and that's one of the wonderful things about whiskey you know it's always something new to learn so this was wholly aged in a first fill port pipe uh, for 12 years, uh, distilled in 2011, bottled in 2023, and again bottled at 50%. Next bottling is an unnamed uh, Isla, uh, a 15-year-old Isla that I have been reliably informed is Lefroig, although it doesn't say that on the label. Um, so this was distilled in September of 2008, bottled in November of 2023, and again 50%. So um, I haven't seen an independent bottling of Lefroig for a long time. And then finally, we're on to the peated Glenglasso, which is called... Uh, <laughs> 
sorry, I'm going to going to sort of uh, crucify the pronunciation, Ockinderum. Um, so this is uh, 13 years old, uh, aged in a first fill Pedro Zimenez Hoggy, uh, distilled in June of 2010, bottled in September of 2023. So um, what I think is a really intriguing lineup, some interesting stuff. Um, let's kick off with the uh, the art layer. Right, okay, so let's see what the art layer gives us then. Okay, so that's an interesting nose. Quite citric, um, quite chalky almost. Um, some barley. Now the other, the first bottling of Ardlair I came across was the Signatory. Um, about a similar sort of age, I think. Trouble was it was first fill sherry and there wasn't really an awful lot of um, spirit character going on. But this has got plenty of spirit character. It's got, like I said, it's got this real chalkiness. Um, Slight earthiness, there's some dried red fruit, touch of straw, dark chocolate. That's a lovely nose. Um, and it's kind of like one of those sort of like, oh, so that's what um, unpeated Ardmore is like. Um, and it's very nice, actually. I mean, you know, I've come across Ardmore pretty much from almost peatless through to sort of like stinking the huge amounts of peat. Um, it's almost a bit like Kalila, I suppose, in, 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 in a manner. It is so variable on the level of peat. Um, and of course, obviously, as you well know, Kalila makes a, an unpeated spirit as well. So, so yeah, I, I like this. I think this is a lovely nose. Um, lovely balance. Um, like I said, plenty of, of spirit character, distillery character, and a little bit of, uh, of red wininess. So it's all all really pretty harmonious. Let's see what passes on. That's a lovely chewy finish. Quite malty in actual fact. It seems like the um the red red wine cask was kind of almost emphasised the maltiness um, or maybe Ardmore is actually quite malty but the peat kind of like detract or distracts not detracts distracts from its maltiness I don't remember Ardmore being quite so weighty in actual fact it, it's normally a, a, a lighter and more minerally and, and um, citric yes there's mineral notes there there's citric notes there but it has a lovely weight to it and again really nice balance to it um a little bit grippy on the finish as the sort of like the the wine tannins kind of kick in but yeah plenty of juicy red fruit um and uh, overall i think that's a, a lovely start Here it's Right, okay, so let's move on to the nine-year-old Altmore. So, 13 months Madeira Octave finish. Let's see what the nose gives us on this one, shall we? It's a lot of Madeira, it has to be said. Um, it's that sort of clean, biscuity Madeira character. Sometimes Madeira finishes give you a sort of like a, a bit of a, a burnt biscuit uh, character, but this has a very clean, biscuity character. It's a lovely weight to it. Again, it's certainly got the the Altmore weight. Um, a little bit of a little bit of gooseberry, a little bit of almost tart green fruit, but it is pretty much. It's just about balanced. Um, it's kind of it's one of these sort of notes. I really sort of struck. Well, not struggled. No, that's the wrong word. I kind of went backwards and forwards with this nose. Um, and, I, you know, there were moments when I, I kind of got the balance and really liked it. And then there were moments I was thinking, oh, what's a bit heavy on the Madeira. I'm not really sure about it. Um, and overall, but I kind of came down on the sort of like the side of I like the clean Madeira character. Um, I thought it had a, a lot going for it. And maybe the Madeira is a little, a little intense. Um but you know what? I I, I kind of like this. Um, at the <laughs> in the end, and it took a lot of umming and ahhing. It has to be said. Um, anyway, let's see what passes on.
again the palette is very similar it's very much weighted towards the uh, the Madeira I think if that had been any any longer in the Madeira I think you would have probably completely lost any Altmore character as such the Altmore character is kind of um, fairly hidden um, but you can pick it out it like I said it has the weight I mean Altmore has this lovely weight to it um, and there's a little bit of oily barley um, again plenty of that sort of unburnt biscuit character which I thought was quite appealing and and like I said there's a little bit of green fruit a little bit of green apple gooseberry um, so overall I think it's actually got some lovely complexity yes it is slightly heavy on the Madeira um, but and like I said it's it, sometimes when you when you're evaluating samples and certainly fig, figuring out whether you actually want to purchase them and stick them on the shelves and some of these may well be on the shelves in a certain um, whiskey emporium um, it, you get often you get an, an initial kind of like yep that's great love that want that on the shelves or no don't really like that don't want it on the shelves and then sometimes you, you kind of have this sort of bit in the middle where you're kind of like mm, do I really like it you know sometimes it's kind of like you, you you buy whiskey because you know there are certain customers or certain people that would like it and as long as the quality is good then I've got no problem with that um, sometimes you know you kind of like battle with yourself and you think you know because at the end of the day if I'm not going to get behind a whiskey I'm not going to sell it so it's kind of pointless having something on the shelf that I really don't believe in um, and like I said, this was one that I really kind of like ummed and ahed about um, and eventually I thought, yeah, you know what, I think it's got it's got some in, enough interest to sort of like, you know, um, make it an interesting whiskey at the end of the day, if you see what I mean. And all I can think is right, okay, so let's move on to the Glenglasso Craig Mills, 12-year-old, fully matured in port pipes. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Well, I don't get any 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 distillery character whatsoever out of this. Um, it is all about the port. It's kind of soft, silky, lots of um, fresh and dried red black fruits, um, a little bit of salt, some toasted oak, a little bit of vanilla, some menthol. But aside from that, I don't get any spirit character whatsoever. Um, I mean, it's very clean, there's no off notes, and it's, you know, one of those sort of whiskies that I'm sure that there are a lot of people that would really like. But for me, it's kind of like, I wanted to know what unpeated, I mean, Glen Glasso is like. I mean, I know personally what Glen Glasso is like. I've tasted it an inordinate amount of times. Um, but, you know, I wanted this to be a little bit more balanced. Um, and unfortunately, it isn't. It's been you know, wholly aged in the port cask and that's pretty much all you're getting. Anyway, let's see what the pal's on. It's soft, it's silky, lovely and chocolatey it has to be said. Um, the only distillery character is a bit of salt. That's a pretty much about it. Um, other than that, it's all about the cask. It's got a love, good length. It's got um, no off notes. The quality is good, but at the end of the day, it's pretty simple stuff. It's all port cask and no trousers. Okay, so let's move on to uh, the Isla. So, 15-year-old Lefroy. Apparently, this is some the, the as you can probably I don't know whether you can see from the label on on the picture, but if you have to zoom it in, um, they've started a kind of a sub bottling um, label called the Havelock series. Um, now, I, I'm led to believe that Havelock is um, um, an aeronautical term. Um, it's something that the um, the pilot says to the co-pilot. Have a lock the door. 
made that up completely. I've got no idea what have a lock actually means at all. Um, <laughs> I didn't ask the question, but I thought that was a pretty good explanation. Right, I love making up these little things. Certainly, when I'm doing whiskey tastings, uh, I'll often or, or wine tastings, I'll make things up because and sort of you know because nobody's going to know. Uh, but I always tell people if I make things up anyway. So, but I thought that was <laughs> that was that was quite cool, quite witty. I thought anyway. Um, enough of that. Let's uh, see what the the nose is like. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's lovely. Um, it's not cheap either, I can tell you that. But I mean, you know, you don't expect a 15 year old uh, Lefroy to be particularly cheap. Um, it's a classic Lefroy nose. It's quite medicinal. Um, it's got some lovely mature barley notes, white pepper, astringent peat, coastal notes, green apple, a little bit of lime, gooseberry, vanilla, not a huge amount of oak. Um, so I'm guessing a refill American oak um, hoggy or possibly barrel. Oh, 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 that's a beautiful whiskey, it has to be said. Um, just, just spot on, just absolutely classic, ma relatively mature-ish uh, Lefroy. I mean, what more do you want? What more do you want? Absolutely gorgeous. Yep, expensive, but mm, see what that's like. Fresh, crisp, salty, white peach, pear, apricot, white pepper, medicinal peat, mature barley, um, touch of bog myrtle, soot, mm, gorgeous length, I mean, beautiful length, um, I mean, you know, <laughs> Lefroy doesn't make bad whiskey, does it, at the end of the day, um, and that has got a beautiful complexity to it, mm, saltiness is just lingering on my tongue, and little bits of flecks of green apple, bog myrtle, um, medicinal peat, dry peat, I mean that is just a beautiful whiskey, if you love your Islas then oh, oh that is stunning, I mean and not much more to say apart from that. Okay so let's move on to the final whiskey of the afternoon, um, Ooh, not quite afternoon yet. Um, ooh, proof for breakfast. Um, anyway, right. Um, so this is the Ockenderum. Um, so the peated um, Glenglasso spirit. Let's see what nose is on that. Yeah, it's peat and sherry basically. Um, it's earthy, charcoal, treacle, toasted oak, dried fruit. Plum, raisins, um, there's a, again a little bit of coastal astringency, not a huge amount of distillery character. Um, first fill PX Hoggy wouldn't have expected any real distillery character. It is peat and sherry. Now, it's one of those sort of whiskies where I know people are going to love I'm, because they are people that love peat and sherry, and it's very clean, no off notes, no sulfur. Um, I mean, I'd love to see some, uh, you know, um, Glen Glasso kind of character, but unfortunately it is Pete and Sherry at the end of the day. Let's see what uh, the power's like. Chewy, quite firm finish. Um, salt, citrus, dried fruit. Again, big, chunky, um, treacle, raisinated dried fruits, earthy, sooty kind of peat. Um, a little bit of salt on the finish, There's a, and a herbal astringent kind of note running through it as well. Um, again, it is peat and sherry. Good quality peat and sherry, I have to say. And certainly, like I said, there, was, there are customers that would love this kind of stuff. Um, so, you know, although from a personal perspective, I don't really find it particularly exciting. From a commercial point of view, I can see where it kind of fits in. 
Um, and this this is always the case, you know. Um, it's the same when you know you're you're looking at things, looking at these kind of whiskies, and you're thinking, okay, um, I I need to cover bases because I know there are people that like certain styles, certain whiskies, and as long as the quality is good, and and you know, I'm not going to say the quality is bad. If the quality was bad, I wouldn't stick it on the shelf, even if I knew that there are people that love Pete and Jerry. I didn't, I didn't think it had complexity within those kind of parameters um i certainly wouldn't put it on the shelf but the point being is i'm quite happy to sell that you know that's a great a great whiskey a great whiskey from a pete and jerry perspective you see what i mean doesn't quite have the the, the, the complexity to to really kind of like you know get my juices going um but you know there is a sort of a, a commercial angle to this and uh, um i guess at the end of the day um that's that that's that's a, a very valid point. So there you go. Right, okay, so that's some for today's episode of the show. Firstly, a big big thank you to both uh, Julian and uh, to Paul for the samples for today's episode of the show. One thing I didn't actually say about um uh, about them is that uh, they also um are quite happy to sell to the general public casks shall we say and uh, although they, they're not a cask investment firm they have sold shares in um, uh, a cask that they've recently bottled which I don't didn't get a sample of the it was a, a Kalila I believe and um, they actually I, I believe um, guaranteed a, a, a selling price shall we say to the customers that invested so uh, that is kind of like quite quite a nice thing so um if they do a second uh, another bottling like that then um certainly i don't think that would be uh, you know what i'm trying to say is they're not one of these kind of rip-off merchant uh, in, investors and uh, cask investments and it's like everything isn't it when, whenever whenever you kind of like type sort of whiskey in on, on sort of Google or what have you, all you get is a profusion of these whiskey investment companies and I don't know who the hell half of them are, but anyway. Um, but anyway, that's that's beside the point. Um, let's, uh, let's talk about uh, Glass Shoe Spirit. I think sort of like, you know, um, the hit rate of, the, of this five, I mean, you know, pretty good. I mean, I, I, I'm impressed. Um, there, there's, shall we say, I know you get... You know, I, the amount of times that sort of independent bottling companies give me the sort of like the 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 the, the waffle about oh, we would reject more than we actually bottle, which is frankly, um, shall we say, stretching it somewhat in certain cases. But um, you know, I, I for me, I do reject an awful lot more than I actually sort of end up buying. So to get sort of like a hit rate of four out of five for me personally, I think is 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 pretty damn good, shall we say. Um, now I love the Ard Lair. I thought that actually had some lovely character. It's it's unique. It's interesting, and and that's what I want from a kind of a whiskey, from a, a retailer's point of view. That's you, you kill for this sort of stuff. You know, something that's got a little bit of a story to it, um, and you can say, look, you've never had this before, have you? You know, and. Um, it then gives you a reason for tasting it. It's kind of like, yeah, really nice. Getting the, the, the character of the unpeated Ardmore and the character of the finishing cask. So, um, can't argue with that one. The Ardmore, like I said, is one of those ones that I kind of battled with and eventually I kind of, it kind of won, shall we say, you know. So, Altmore won, you know, good dram show nil kind of thing. Um, and it's, like I said, it's, it's very good of what it actually is um there's just about enough balance for me to sort of like you know say yeah i kind of quite like that and it, so yeah it was a sort of like the um ah kind of bottling um unfortunately i couldn't say the same about the uh, the port matured glen glasso it was just too much port too unbalanced um and just really not enough kind of interest for me at all um on the other hand the 15 year old lafroy just kind of like blew me away i mean stunning I mean, you know, getting hold of sort of Castle of Freud these days is kind of like, I imagine, pretty much nigh on impossible. Um, and to get sort of hold of the Castle of Freud with a bit of age to it, again, yes, all right, yes, I know it's just silly money at the end of the day, but if you've got, you know, Bill Gates' bank balance, then what the hell. Um, <laughs> uh, and the final bottling, the, the peated Glenglasso. Okay, it... it 
from a commercial angle, like I said, it's Pete and Sherry. I know the people that love Pete and Sherry, so it, it makes sense. From a personal perspective, I'm less kind of like, you know, um, uh, blown away by that than I was the Lefroy. The Lefroy was stunning, it has to be said. Um, the the, the Glen Glasso. I would have liked to have seen some more distillery character, but, you know, you don't always get what you want at the end of the day, do you? Um, so, there you have it. Um, like I said, some of these bottlings... Um, are at a merchant um, not a million miles away from here and uh, uh, if you if you don't <laughs> live in the vicinity then obviously you can uh, um, purchase them directly from the guys themselves so and I would certainly suggest that you do so and you know and support a, a, a new uh, independent bottling company because that they're, they're obviously bottling some lovely whiskey and yeah I, just those labels. I mean, the labels are just absolutely gorgeous, and uh, you know, well, well worth, well worth shelling out your pennies for. That's all I can say. So, until next week, um, I actually know what I'm going to be doing next week, which is actually a pretty, which is a bloody surprise. Sometimes I haven't got a clue until about midweek, and I think, well, I'll do that one. But I know what I'm going to be doing, and. Well, hopefully it's going to be interesting. I say all episodes of the show are anyway. So all that's left to say is. Good afternoon and good running.